Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to get access to the RuneLight developer tools. Even if you're not planning on developing any RuneLight plugins, I still find the developer tools to be extremely useful, uh, mainly the detached camera plugin, but there are other uses for the tools beyond just development. There used to be a really easy way to access the developer tools, but unfortunately a few months ago they pulled them. So now you actually do need to install a custom version of it yourself. Fortunately, it is pretty easy to do and will only take around 5 to 10 minutes. Anyway, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. So to make a custom install of RuneLite and get the developer tools, you're going to need three different programs. First up here, we're going to download IntelliJ. This is the actual environment where we're going to be building our custom version of RuneLite. So you just want to go to Google, type in IntelliJ. We're going to go ahead and click on download and then we're going to click on the community version. That's all you're going to need. It should then start an automatic download. Once it's downloaded, you can go ahead and install it. And I'll just use any of the default settings. I don't really change anything up here. Just hit next a few times and the program will begin to install. All right, so once that is done installing, don't bother opening it up yet. There is one more important thing we need to download first, and that is the Java development kit and preferably version 8. Now I think you can get away with the other versions, but just for the sake of this, I would install JDK 8 just to be sure. We're going to go ahead and go to the Oracle website, look for Java JDK. I am going to be downloading the 64-bit version, but of course, uh, download the one that's right for your computer. Unfortunately, Oracle may make you sign up for an account to start to download, and after that, the Java development kit will start downloading. From here, we're going to go ahead and install a Java. Okay, so once Java is done installing, we'll go ahead and open up IntelliJ. So we're not going to import any settings because this is the first time we've uh, opened this up. And we'll go ahead and click skip remaining and set default. So once IntelliJ is open up, we want to go ahead and click on check out from version control and go to Git. Now we don't actually have Git downloaded yet, uh, but there's actually an automatic way to do this. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste the Git repository for RuneLite and put it in here. I just need to make a separate folder to install it to because I've already done this once. If this is your first time, the default location will be fine. And we'll go ahead and click on clone. Now you'll notice there's actually an error and this is kind of the way to do it quicker. Once you go check out the error, it just says you cannot run git and you just need to download it. So click on download and it should automatically start the git download. From here, we'll go ahead and install git. Just leave all the defaults the same. Hit next a few times and the program will begin to install. So once git is installed, pretty much go back and do the exact same thing again. We'll go ahead and type in the URL for the GitHub of RuneLite, select our folder, and then we'll go ahead and click on the clone button. This time you should notice a progress bar has started. We're pretty much copying everything over from the RuneLite git. Hit yes, IntelliJ should open up with all of the imported information. Okay, so once IntelliJ is open, we're going to go ahead and click on our project at the left here and add configuration at the top right. From here, we want to hit the plus button in the corner and go down to Maven. On the working directory, we're going to hit the folder icon and go down to the client folder. In the command line, we're going to type in install. In the command line, I'm going to type in install space capital D skip tests. We're going to hit OK and then we're going to hit the run button at the top right. From here we're going to be building the RuneLite client. This could take a couple minutes. It has to download and install a few things. Now I will type the exact string of text in the description if you want to copy and paste it. The first few times I was doing this, I was not typing it in correctly because I am a complete noob. I'm just following some instructions here and trying to make it easier for oh, well, people who want maybe the detached camera or maybe a few other things just for general playing. I do understand if someone is actually developing RuneLite plugins and they probably already know how to do this. So this is going to keep going until at the end it'll say build successful. So I'll come back when it is all done. Okay, so once it's done building, you'll notice there's quite a few different folders in the sidebar here. We want to go down to the RuneLite client, uh, then to target, and then to test classes. And then we're going to click on the client 1.5.2.1 snapshot shaded. From here, we want to go ahead and right click on the shaded.jar and go run the client. From here, we'll actually open up our very first version of RuneLite. After a few moments, it should open up and this will tell us that we've installed and built everything correctly. Uh, you will notice there actually is not any development tools though. Uh, so we will need to do one more thing to enable those, which is really the whole point of this video. So we'll exit out of RuneLite, right click on the jar at the top and go down to edit it. From here, we want to put in some VM options as well as a program argument. In the VM options error, we're going to do dash EA. And under the program arguments, we're going to do dash dash developer dash mode. 
which is similar to how you would enable it before they changed it. And that is pretty much it. From here we can go ahead and run it once again. We'll wait a few moments here and the RuneLight client should open up and this time we will have the RuneLight developer tools enabled. You can see the little star icon at the side. Just to show off that they do work, we went and logged into an account, went over to the developer tools tab, and you can see we have a, the detached camera tool, which is pretty fun to use, particularly useful for YouTubers, mildly useful for anyone else. We have the game objects developer tool, which really legs me for some reason, the wall developer tool, the chunk borders tool, which uh, I don't know, pretty useful for the one chunk only guy. Camera position, uh, you can highlight NPCs, you can highlight your own player, not particularly useful, but there are a few genuinely useful things in here beyond the detached camera tool plugin, which is the reason I did it. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like, I always appreciate it, and I will see you next time.